Let people fill in for a second here. All right, and while everyone's getting filled in here, um, I will type this in just so people coming later will also have the information, but uh, thanks for joining everyone for today's coffee break. Um, just a quick note on how to interact. Um, if you need to ask a question of the panelists themselves, uh, feel free to use the question and answer function uh, within the Zoom webinar dashboard down there. Makes it much easier for us to keep track of what questions have been asked and uh, which ones have been answered. Uh, you have the ability to view all questions that have been asked, um, so you can make them anonymously if you want to. Uh, you can upvote good questions and you can add your own comments if there's something that you want to add to it. Uh, for anything else, side questions or side comments, discussion, uh, technical issues, feel free to use the chat uh, function. Um, if you want to address those just to panelists, then make sure you select the all panelists option in the two window. If you want everybody to see it, then make sure you select all panelists and attendees there. Uh, so with that, I want to hand it off to Melanie Gottlieb, our moderator for the day. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Happy Friday. Um, I'm Melanie Gottlieb, Deputy Director at ACRO, and I'd like to welcome you to today's ACRO Coffee Break. It's a pleasure to be on the line with all of you today as we navigate the challenges presented by the COVID-19 crisis together. Um, today, I'd like to welcome our colleagues from Parchment. Next slide. Uh, we have with us Matt Stinson, Director of Higher Education, and Justin Rayner, Senior Solutions Engineer, both from Parchment, who is a valued partner at ACRO. We've asked them here today to talk about their solutions to the challenges around transcript delivery during this time, as well as to give you any updates on their product and resources to help you stay informed as you navigate the challenges that have arisen uh, due to the current cri crisis. As always, we're hopeful that our technology will not fail us. Um, this is a fairly large Zoom call with a number of panelists and we're all working at the mercy of our home Wi-Fi, so bear with us if we have any bumps. So far, it's been pretty, pretty good. Uh, we've had a good record on our coffee breaks. Um, we're not using the video function and your mics are all muted so as to save on bandwidth. Um, at the end of the webinar, we will have a Q&A. And uh, with so many of you on the call, we know that we might not be able to answer all of your questions, but rest assured, we'll collect them and add it to our ever-growing list of policy questions for our guidance team to work through. Um, and we'll share with the vendor as well. Next slide. I'd like to remind you that as you navigate these challenges, uh, your association is here to connect you with network colleagues to work through together in this time of unprecedented disruption in our profession. We've opened up our content vaults to the higher education community through our free three month membership option. If your membership is lapsed or if there are others on campus that you want to have access to our resources to support you through this transition, we hope that you will consider this option. Um, you can find the option on our website or you can email membership at acro.org for more information. Next slide. Just a reminder uh, for those of you on the call, we've just released the new 2020 Academic Record and Transcript Guide. It's available in the ACRO Bookstore. Um, all of our COVID-19 guidance does align with the latest ARTG. And in the ARTG are some additional reminders and tips around business continuity planning. Next slide. I also want to direct you to our ACRO practice guidance page, uh, which is our acro.org slash COVID-19. You'll find related guidance that endorses alternative practices for institutions in this time of crisis. All of our practices um, advocate clear communication to all of your stakeholders, transparency of practice to those stakeholders, a consistent approach and application of practice, all acting in the best interests of students. We know that if you apply ACRO guidance uh, to the practices at your institution, you will have a good balance between protection of your institutional integrity 
and overall support of student success. Next slide. We also have over the past month done three COVID-19 impact practice snapshot surveys. If you have not um, looked at those surveys, you can find them on our, the ACRO website, acro.org slash COVID guidance. Um, the first one released on April 3rd talked about grading and transcript practices along with commencement plans. The second had an undergraduate enrollment indicators, admissions practice, and fall course delivery. The third talked about transfer credit, official transcript, receipt and delivery, and fall start term dates. Next slide. So a couple of uh, data points that I'd just like to highlight for you from these surveys that are related to transcript delivery. Um, the first talked about official transcript printing during COVID-19 and of the 76% who are printing official transcripts at this time who are still printing paper-based, 64% of those people are actually heading to their campuses through some sort of a modified procedure um, in order to do that. Another 13% are printing through a transcript vendor. 13% printed at home by a staff member. Uh, it's surprising the number of institutions who are taking their transcript paper and seal home and, and attempting to make that happen for them. Um, and there's a small percentage who are doing it on campus just as before COVID-19 because they weren't currently working from home. Next slide. Um, just another data point. Um, we asked about what changes were under consideration or already made to how official high school transcripts were being received in response to COVID-19. And so of the 87% who receive high school transcripts and the 34% who are considering or who have already made changes, um, they were 83% are accepting unofficial transcripts in lieu of official transcripts for the time being. Um, another 29% through a, a transcript vendor. And there is an even smaller percentage, 17% who are doing EDX and some other solutions. Next slide. All right, and then also changes under consideration made to how official transcripts are being received in response, 73%. We're accepting unofficial transcripts in lieu of official transcripts for the time being. 31% are receiving through a vendor, not EDX. Uh, another 17% are receiving through EDX. That seems to be a fairly consistent number. Um, and there are a, a few other solutions. Next slide. And the la I think this is the last data slide, changes of under consideration made to how official college transcripts are being delivered. Among the 21% who are already considered or making changes, electronic delivery through a vendor, 59%. 27% were delivering unofficial transcripts in lieu of having that ability. So there's still thir a good number of people who are having some challenges. And another 20% have other solutions. And we're just gonna go on to the next slide. Oh, nope. Uh, go back. We're gonna turn the, uh, the mic over to Matt. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Mel, for the introduction and uh, Michael and all the folks at ACRO for um, your leadership in putting this together and all the great research that you're doing in this space. Um, as folks mentioned, my name is, is Matt Stinson and I run our higher education team here at Parchment. I'll be joined by uh, my colleague Justin Rayner, who is a um, senior solutions engineer here, who will actually take us through a little bit of a test drive of the uh, Parchment product to show you a little bit of the ways that we're helping other institutions through these, uh, these crazy times. I'm just doing a quick look through the attendee list. I, it's comforting. I see some familiar names. I uh, wish this was happening at a conference or over a real cup of coffee, but hopefully uh, the information we present here will be valuable. And if there's anything that um, you think that Parchment might be able to do to help 
I've listed my contact information here. That's my email address and that's my cell number and feel free to reach out at any time should, uh, should you need anything. Um, and I was told uh, by the Acro folks to turn the camera off because of bandwidth issues. Um, I think in all reality, um, they were trying to do me a favor and spare me a little bit of humiliation as I did receive an at-home haircut from my wife last night. So I appreciate uh, the good looking out from the folks over there. Um, I will um, just frame kind of what Justin and I are gonna share and then um, we'll, we'll jump in into the, uh, the meat and potatoes, so to speak. I think Mel did a great job of kind of casting the why of, of, um, of why we're here today. I'll add a little bit more context into that. I'll share a uh, pretty high level overview of, of what Parchment is and, and does um, from a, a, the perspective of how we're serving uh, higher ed institutions across the country and across the globe. I'll pitch it over to my colleague, Justin, who will actually show you what it's like to be a student interacting with the Parchment service to request transcripts and other credentials. Um, the tools that we can provide to your institution to actually process those remotely or in your office. Um, and then we'll definitely allow for some question and answer at the end. I think that's where a lot of the value of these sessions um, can really exist. So I think one thing that everyone on this webinar probably is uh, in agreement on, agreement on is that credentials are super critical, um, especially in a, in a knowledge-based economy your credentials, your transcripts, your diplomas, your certificates, these are the things that really communicate to the outside world what I know and how well I know it. And we've seen a huge trend over the past decade, uh, and even going back further to the first uh, Speedy Committee to move transcripts um, into a digital format. And um, we view this as really critical to helping your learners leverage those credentials to go get that next opportunity, whether they're applying to transfer to another institution, whether they're going for a job offer or to go get a professional certification, the credential is really the core thing of that uh, transaction. And having a, a digital credential um, and digital transcript system is really critical because your students have a lot of these. They, aren't, they have multiple credentials from your institution, whether that be a diploma, a certificate, a transcript, they also more likely than not, as we know from um, trends over the last five or 10 years, students are attending more than one academic institution. And so anything we can do to make it easier for them to access those things um, is, is super critical to us. And this has always been our guiding light. And obviously over the last couple of weeks and, and months since uh, COVID-19 has impacted every, you know, every, every area of the economy and of our day-to-day -day life, we're really seeing um, the need to move credentials, transcripts online, um, being accelerated. Our, our CEO, Matthew Batinsky, uh, wrote a, a column that ACRO was, uh, was, was uh, gracious enough to post on their site uh, going back a couple days ago talking about this shift. I've linked to it here and we'll make sure we'll distribute the, uh, the slides out to folks in case that's, that's interesting. Um, but we're seeing a, a great shift to um, get a solution in place to offer transcripts online. We hear stories of folks coming into the office, kind of sneaking into the office against the, uh, the wishes of administration, folks bringing home printers and seals and doing things the old fashioned way at home. And so um, Parchment is really pleased to, um, it, through ACRO's leadership, put together a really quick and easy way to access digital transcripts at no cost to your institution. Um, I'll, and that's really what we'll, we'll talk most about today. I, I do also wanna share the other area that we hear institutions asking for help is around um, the issuance of diplomas and certificates, similar challenges face um, institutions who, who don't have access to their printers. And so um, one of the things to call out is through the Parchment platform, many institutions already are taking advantage of digital diplomas as a way of celebrating their students during these these times where they aren't able to walk across the stage, they aren't able to hear their name called at commencement and shake the hand of the provost and the president. And while this isn't gonna replace that, uh, many institutions view a immediate digital diploma as a way of really uh, celebrating that student and their accomplishments. And through our platform, students have the ability to share those digital diplomas through LinkedIn and other social channels through APIs that we've built out. And I've shared just a couple examples here from San Francisco State University and Duke University. 
The one on the left um, from Amari really uh, captured us a couple weeks ago all at Parchment and kind of was a real um, reaffirmation of the work that we're doing here. And, and obviously we're not uh, healthcare workers and we're not firefighters and we're not lawyers or doctors. Um, but uh, this, this felt good in that the work that we're doing is having an impact on a student who otherwise wasn't able to walk across the stage, still able to really celebrate publicly um, their uh, digital diploma. As you can see, they got 305 likes and um, you know comments and, and conversation is, is happening on this channel. So at a really high level, um, what, what Parchment offers is a comprehensive tool for institutions to bring all of their credentials online and for their students to access them. And as we mentioned, this isn't a problem that's unique to transcripts. While that's probably the, the most transacted document in your office and probably the biggest issue and where we'll really focus in with our demonstration, I think it's really important as you look at solutions to consider what's the ceiling of that partnership that I have with that organization and what other types of services and solutions could I get um, should I want to uh, expand that partnership. And at a high level, these are really the three things that our partners like Duke and, and Ivy Tech and um, we work with over 1600 institutions across the country tell us we're really critical for them in their evaluation. They wanted to have one place to have all their documents for their staff. Uh, with each vendor and each process you have, there's retraining and, and upskilling. And anytime someone leaves, you need to train someone else on a new system. And so they really like the idea of having just one consolidated place to keep those documents. From a student perspective, that really simplifies the workflow. I've got one place to go request my transcript. I've got one place to go view the order status of that transcript to see if it's been delivered. I can also request a replacement diploma or do some of that social sharing of my diplomas or certificates on LinkedIn, all from one location, which we'll show you in a second. And lastly, there's an economic benefit of working with one vendor. If you um, have a fragmented uh, relationship with vendors, you don't increase your purchasing power. Institutions find when they partner with Parchment, they're able to save about 15 to 20% across the, the board of their costs of producing transcripts and diplomas and certificates because they do have that one vendor. And I will reiterate, uh, the transcript service that we'll walk through today is completely free to institutions to use. Um, generally speaking, the way that um, the service is structured is that transactionally students, when they make a request, are charged a nominal fee. And you may have seen news recently that I don't want to bury the lead, um, that Parchment and Credential Solutions recently merged in, uh, in February. And so we're about two and a half months in of the new partnership and we're, we're super excited. We've you know, had conversations with our old Parchment members and our old Credentials members and are, are sharing our excitement um, and uh, are starting to put a path forward of what these two organizations look like as a, as a merged entity. And across those two pre-existing networks, we serve over 5,000 high schools, almost 1,500 higher ed institutions or over 1,500 higher ed, ed institutions sending credentials through our network and almost 8,000 organizations are receiving credentials and transcripts through our networks. And we offer a, a wide variety of services as we've touched on the ability to take requests and fulfill them digitally, um, print and mail services for diplomas and transcripts, as well as a host of admissions tools to make it easier to process inbound electronic documents, which, is, which has become increasingly important in a world where you can't really receive printed mail currently either. For the rest of the, the conversation, um, I will really focus in on transcript services. And um, we've worked really diligently with our implementation team and really driven through ACRO's leadership to make a service imminently and, and quickly available for as many institutions who, who are maybe stuck in a situation right now, as we mentioned, where you have folks at home printing on uh, out of their home printers and adhering a manual seal or sneaking into the office to, uh, to print out some transcripts and get them shipped out as quickly as you can. Um, so I'll, I'll do a couple uh, things to look for, but really, if you're anything like me, you're a visual learner and it's easier and simpler to see things um, in, the, uh, in the application itself. And so I'll turn it over to Justin to actually walk through what the service looks like. At the super highest level, uh, Parchment Send enables you to support any type of a requester, a student, or an alumni, or even a third party organization, like a licensing organization or a background check company to request any type of document 
transcripts, diplomas, certificates, enrollment verifications, going to any destination, whether that's one of the 8,000 organizations that can receive digitally through parchment, or if you need to send it to an organization that's outside of our network, we can send it digitally via a secure email link, or we also offer in-house print and mail services. And I think it's really important to hammer home that um, through the merger between parchment and credentials, we now operate in-house to um, very, very secure, very secure um, print, print facilities that are um, managed in-house through, through Parchment. So what does it mean to process? Um, we offer a couple of different methods that an institution can leverage to actually fulfill the request that you'll get through our platform. Um, at the simplest level, within a couple of days of, uh, of working with Parchment, we can get you live on what we call web upload. It requires zero IT resources and can work to get you going, especially if you're in a situation right now where you don't have a good solution. We also offer automation at no additional cost by integrating with um, most of the SISs on the market today, with your PeopleSofts, your banners, um, your colleagues, um, even legacy homegrown systems we have a, a wide uh, experience integrating with as well, which will enable you to, to really spend less time fulfilling those records if we're automated. Also, institutions see a big drop in uh, the amount of time they spent fulfilling them, even if it's just using the web upload. And there's some pretty tremendous data that we'll capture in that process that, that helps institutions make strategic decisions. One of the questions we ask in the ordering workflow is why are you requesting this transcript? And institutions that uh, want to know, oh, well, the student is transferring, maybe this is a good point to intervene and get the academic advisor involved in a conversation. On the, the student ordering experience side of things, um, I think the, the biggest thing to hammer home here is that the student has an account with Parchment. And this is critical because they're gonna request multiple transcripts from your institution. They may forget that. They may call you and say, did my transcript get delivered? Parchment tracks all of that for them so they can just log into their account and see the status of that order. And they can also begin to stack other credentials from other institutions that they've attended all within their learner account. On the administrative side of things, we think our tool is pretty simple, easy to use. We'll show it in just a second. We can get you going in less than 10 days for web upload. And we also have more robust offerings through integrations with those other SISs. And our print facilities, we've got um, facilities in Scottsdale, Arizona and Deerfield, Illinois. Both are operational right now. We leverage biometric security so that only the right folks that need to get into those, uh, those um, offices have the ability to. Uh, we do same day shipping. So if we get an order by 2 p.m. Pacific, it's gonna go out that same day. There's tracking on those um, transcripts. And we also offer printing and mailing diplomas as well, where we have uh, commitments to our members to print and, and get diplomas out within seven to 15 days of that order being placed. As I mentioned, we've got the quick and easy get you going web upload, um, which we'll walk through today, but we also have touch free automation with just about every SIS in the market today. And certainly if, uh, if this is of more interest, I, I'll leave my contact info and we can talk more about what that may look like for your specific SIS. But with that, Primer, I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to Justin and we can um, go into the demo. I don't know, uh, Mal or Michael, if, if there are some questions in the chat, this might be a good time to, to kind of pause and take a couple before we get too far gone with the, um, with the web demonstration. I'd be happy to take a few now. Absolutely. Uh, there are a couple of questions, so I can share those now. Um, the first is that uh, is a question about merger. So due to the credential solutions and parchment merger, will we be able to ac access credential solution transcripts in parchment? And is there any action requested by the institution to enable this feed? That is a great question. And, and one of the ones when we uh, are, are having conversations with old credentials members or old parchment members is one that comes up almost always. And so we've actually put together, we, we hope to communicate a lot of this stuff at ACRO this year. And obviously with the, with the current conditions that has shifted, but as a, uh, as a supplement to that, we've created a, uh, a, a, a newsletter that has been distributed out to all of our, our parchment members. So I'll make sure in the follow-up to include that information. But the short answer is, is yes. Well, the, the most immediate integration that we're doing on the, the technical side is to feed all of the credentials and parchment transcripts into the same receive account. 
and we're doing that work now and um, we'll have a kind of more hardened delivery dates to uh, share with the public very soon. But that is something that is happening in the immediate term and there is no action needed to request that. That's gonna be a, a global change that we'll communicate out to the membership when we're ready. Great. Um, one other question is, um, what advice do you have in order to expedite the process um, as much as possible for an institution to sign up for uh, what they're calling parchment light to receive sure. official transcripts only? Sure. Um, yeah, I think that's a great question. And um, as you as can, can might imagine, we've been uh, uh, seeing a great number of those requests come in. Um, so I will, um, I'll, I'll leave my info here. So if anyone individually on this webinar is having issues, please drop me a personal email and I'll see fit if there's any issues that aren't being handled immediately. My cell is on there as well. So feel free to give me a call and I will uh, take that feedback kind of back to the, to the team and figure out if there's other things that we can be doing to expedite that process to sign up to receive transcripts electronically. Great, I think that's all the questions for now. Okay. Justin, do you want to take over and, um, and begin to drive? Got it. Thanks, Matt. Um, in answer to that last question, I'll also just drop in that on our website at parchin.com, under products, uh, then you'll find receive. Uh, this talks about receive and you can uh, go about scheduling a demo or, or talking through that. And that's really the first step. If anybody has not completed that or, or based on the question, uh, that lets us know you're interested and we'll, we'll get somebody in front. And if you've already completed that, like Matt said, let us know. We'll make sure um, any of our team lets you know how that process can continue. So that's where you can find it, parchin.com products receive um, for that info. So what I, I'm gonna walk you through today is the, the learner experience, the student ordering that transcript, as well as how do we process that uh, from that web upload standpoint that Matt mentioned. And what I'm showing here is Example Digital University, just a demo school for us to go through. And this would be a landing page for students. You can link over to this page, or we offer single sign-on integration for students coming from the portal uh, to go through and uh, get that account going with Parchment. Um, if it's their first time, they just need to create that account so that they can track those orders, see the history, get email updates um, as it moves through statuses. Uh, they'll just input their name, years of attendance. Uh, they can include like a last four of SSN to help you find that record. And then an email address and password. And once they create that, they can go ahead and continue to log in as an existing user uh, and utilize that account. And as we mentioned, it, it helps them not only track those orders from your institution, but they can add their high school or other institutions and manage all of them in that same account. So one account purposes uh, all of those transcript and order requests. And then we talked about the third party ordering account where uh, if you wanted to enable background check companies, organizations, businesses to order on behalf of a student, because you probably get those requests today through faxes and phone calls anyway, um, then you can have them place that order here uh, as well. So just another avenue where um, once you link out for document request to parchment, any user can take care of that if you wish. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in with an account that we already have created. Um, and this is going to uh, show us the, the parchment account for our student here their dashboard and their orders um, and allow them to place that academic request um, here as they, they move through the different document types. Um, so we see like uh, the different schools that we have added. I have just a high school on here or, or Bates, um, Cope River, uh, definitely the different ones. We'll wanna order here from Example Digital University where we can select a transcript. And then it's gonna take us through, where do you want that transcript to go? The next question that we ask is, you know, what's that destination? And, and we have really two workflows here. We talked about our vast network of receivers, those almost 8,000 plus institutions and organizations that receive documents on a regular basis from transcripts. Students can search for uh, the intended recipient here, or they can send to themselves or another individual where they manually enter an email address or a physical address for us to send through. And I'm just gonna walk you through both of those examples uh, really quickly, where if we look for something like Arizona State University uh, is, is an example here. They have an online receiving division. And they also have an undergrad receiving division. They have two receive accounts within Parchment. So the student has uh, less guesswork on where their transcript needs to go and ideally a faster turnaround time. This is often um, also distinguished 
between undergrad and graduate, medical, dental, law, any other programs that your admissions office might want to cater how they receive transcripts can be presented here. And as well, I utilize ASU because it pulls up Appalachian State University, just another receiver that has that same acronym. So it is an acronym search, a name search, as well as a location based on the address if they just want to find universities within their area that they want to send it to or receivers there. Once I select the destination, uh, it gives us a brief description of what we're going to add to the student's shopping cart, um, name, their date of birth, where it's coming from and where it's going to. And then they see the fee over to the right um, for that. And then as we move down, they can select options and we can, uh, as we mentioned, we ask for things like, what is the purpose? Um, so maybe if I select something like employment, you may natively think I'm going to ASU to transfer, um, but maybe I'm actually getting a job or an internship. And so that extra layer of detail really gives further insight beyond destination into what your students need with their documents. And we can add other uh, questions or drop downs, pick lists or special instructions. So if you need to ask students anything else in the process, uh, you can feel free to add those here as well. And then we take uh, a consent here as well. This is a mobile responsive site and they can sign with their mouse or finger um, and just put in a, a, their signature um, and then their name. So I'll put in my name and then check the box that I am requesting my own transcript. This is captured with each order uh, and stored and viewable from the admin if they wish to, to view that signature. And, and here we see the first document that I completed is added to the shopping cart, the electronic version going to Arizona State University um, and that price over to the right. Now, um, I should mention as well, we never had to select in that workflow electronic. We defaulted that for the student because Arizona State wants it that way. So that's why we see an electronic document here. Um, but we also have the option to send through print mail. And I'm going to do that through another order as well when we select uh, to add another order from example university. Uh, so we'll do another transcript. And now when that destination search, instead of searching for a destination or if I wasn't finding what I was looking for, could also send to myself or another individual. Um, and when selecting send to myself, it just pre-populates the email address uh, with the student's account information, just helps them fill out the forms. If they select another individual, it will just blank these out. Um, and then we can do the same on the paper fashion as well. Um, where we can input a physical address and they can add a rush option if uh, they need that in a hurry. Um, and as Matt mentioned with a, a 2 p.m. cutoff time, as long as we get that order processed before 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, that will go out the same day. Uh, so they can expect that delivery the next day. This is FedEx overnight shipping. Um, for sake of filling out an email, uh, physical address, I'm going to go ahead and just send this uh, here um, to our, our sample email address uh, to add that digital to the order. So this allows um, through the network search, through the email delivery, and through the physical address, Parchment to be able to help those students send to any destination worldwide. Um, and so for this one, maybe I just want to copy for myself, you know, my own digital record of my transcript. We'll keep that signature from before. Go ahead and just check the box to add that to our shopping cart. So very simple and easy to add other destinations and other types of documents to the order. So I can continue to add as many as I need to, um, but we'll go ahead and check out here. And then this takes us to our payment section where we process payments, um, not through parchment, but through a, a vendor that processes these uh, for PCI compliance. We wanna make sure we separate uh, student account information from student payment information as, a, as an extra security step. Uh, and what this means is parchment never sees this credit card information, it's not stored on our servers or um, uh, available to us or to anybody at the institution. This just keeps all of us uh, PCI compliant uh, and, and adds an extra layer of security for the students. So we'll go ahead and uh, submit that payment. And this brings us to the payment confirmation screen. Each uh, I, line item within the shopping cart gets its own order number. We call this a DID number at Parchment, uniquely tracking it uh, for you and the student. So you know that this transcript from Example Digital going to ASU, this is the status of it and, and can track that from both the student side and the administrative side. For the student, if they wanted to go back in and check those under their orders, easily doable um, from that screen uh, to go and see the status and, and updates on anything that's been placed uh, throughout the lifetime of the account. Any status update will appear within the line item and also email to the student, whether that might go on hold or if it's delivered and waiting to be downloaded and then actually downloaded by the uh, individual who received it electronically. 
Those are all different statuses that they get updates on, as well as for physical documents, uh, whenever we have a physical document sent to a destination, um, that delivery information populates here with scans from the USPS and FedEx. Both our shipping options have tracking information embedded in email and into the application for the individual, reducing calls into the office, questions about whether it was sent, when it was sent, or can you send it again? All things I'm sure many of you have heard over and over again. Uh, we hope to prompt the students and present present them with uh, valuable information about their transcript order so that they uh, know that information up front and, and easily available to them. Um, and as I mentioned, um, the student can add any other documents or schools and institutions that they attended uh, to that account and continue to uh, manage those credentials from one spot. So again, all the transcripts or enrollment verifications from one school or their high school or multiples. Um, this is meant to live with them through their educational career. So that takes us through the student ordering side. Um, I'm going to now switch over to the administrative side so that we can take a look at those document requests that we've placed and how to process those and what they look like from an administrative point of view. So as I switch over and sign in, I'll then pull that up here. All right, so what you should be seeing now is the to-do list with Parchment. As an administrator, you get your own credentials that you can manage internally um, and, and set up for your staff. And then once logging in with that email address and password, they'll be presented with a to-do list of orders that have come in. As you see, we have our examples here from a sample student uh, that we placed today going to their email address as well as a university within Parchment's network. So we're displaying the student's information here, their order information, as well as the destination and the type of document, whether it's electronic or print and mail. Um, and then uh, for the web upload to process this order, once you locate the student in your student information system or the transcript that you have on file, if that's a scan or a paper version, um, you can simply drag and drop or search your computer for that um, document. So I'm gonna pull over just uh, some demo uh, documents that I have here. So I have uh, a college transcript I just want to attach to this order. So I can go ahead and drag that over and drop it. And it's going to match to each transcript order that that student placed um, during that process. And here we'll see a manual match has been made. The file is here for viewing if you want to make sure it's the right version. And then you can process out. If you need to remove the document, no problem, attach the wrong one, then you can go ahead and just uh, drag and drop or this alternative uh, upload new file just to search uh, your computer for the one you were looking for and then it will upload. Uh, you can work through your entire list and process all or process individually uh, and then Parchment will take care of the delivery, sending that email notification to the recipient, print mailing it, or sending it to that Parchment receive account that they designated. Uh, the last two things I'm going to cover is what if you don't want to process an order? We can hold this document um, so we can place it on hold and provide a reason to the student. So this will be emailed to them um, if they have overdue funds or anything impacting the release of their transcript. Uh, you can communicate to that here and we will send that to them in a branded email so they're aware of the communication. So if I just put in a test here, we'll put that on hold. This moves it off of our to-do list over to our on holds and it is waiting for the student to take that action here and you can see that message and whenever they are able to uh, release that transcript we just remove the hold uh, and then that's going to come back to our uh, to-do list here in open orders for us to process and you can also cancel those requests and communicate to the students in a similar way usually other with a message of why you might be canceling their request if you haven't heard from them or you can't find their record they need additional information um, so you can always resolve all of those orders through parchment by either uploading the document, uh, putting it on hold and waiting for the student to take action or canceling that request uh, so that you're working with an up to date list. Um, and then the very last thing I'll highlight is the history. If you ever need any questions on any orders, you have a full history search within our system by student, any order number. Or you can just do a, uh, a basic search within our system to say even just pick a date requested. So I want to see everything the students have requested from the first of the year. We'll, set, we'll show you the name, dates, the document type, that DID order number, destination, and the status of those. And of course, you can filter this list by uh, filtering by the document status or the receiver to see all those in that time frame. Or you could simply just export this list to Excel and then work with it outside the platform if you need to.
Uh, so that goes over the student placing the order uh, through Partron and the destinations they can search and then just processing those as they come in by attaching the appropriate file so that Partron can send that finished transcript out to the destination. So at this time, I'm going to hand it back over to Matt uh, and see. Perfect. Thank you so much for that, Justin. I um, will now talk about a few of the things that you can't really demo right, which is student support, administrative support, and implementation. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap and we may actually end up giving folks uh, a decent chunk of time back in their day, which I know uh, can be appreciated. So from a, a support perspective, there's a, a couple different ways that we help out institutions. On the administrative side of things, uh, your office and your folks, you'll have a, an account executive, and this is someone who is assigned to your account they're your point of contact for uh, decisions to add things to your storefront if you're going to start with transcripts and then want to add in replacement diploma ordering, for example, that'd be the person that you'd walk through with that. Um, it, for more uh, tactical support type questions, we do have um, online and phone support and a web portal for registrars. There's also a whole host of uh, knowledge base and articles that are available online to search items and kind of troubleshoot things yourself. And we provide training ongoing uh, at, no, at no cost. So most institutions that we work with, this is a zero dollar contract for them, um, including implementation, including support, including ongoing training. There is uh, no cost to utilize the service. On the student side, it, it, it takes a, different, a couple different approaches. Number one is, is that student account. And if you think about the types of questions that are the, the primary questions that you're probably getting in your office under normal times is wh where is my transcript did you get it it uh, fiu is saying they didn't get it etc cetera, etc cetera. so by providing that simple student account which can either be accessed directly from parchment or through single sign-on through your web portal they can see all of the audit trail of every request that they've ever made including getting notifications to their email address along the way we also offer um, different levels of student support from um, web student support to phone support, depending on how we're partnering with institutions. Um, and uh, there's a whole host of, of knowledge based and web articles and videos on our YouTube channel as well to help students navigate um, the, the ordering process if they're having questions. Getting started can be pretty simple. We would uh, work with you all to define kind of what, what was needed for your specific account um, as well as when you wanted to actually get going, we would provide you with a, a little bit of homework. We call it a welcome kit where you need to get us some artwork and some things that we will use to build what your digital transcript actually looks like. It'll emulate the, the feel and look of your current transcript with a border, a seal, signatures. We'll hop on a call and uh, do a training. We'll have, well, at that point, I've already had configured the back end of the system. And within a, a couple days after that, you should be able to start receiving transcript requests digitally and processing them electronically. If um, you wanted more information on this, certainly as the folks at ACRO will share this presentation afterwards, my personal cell and my email address are on there so you can reach out to me directly. We've also made a, a custom landing page for uh, this webinar with ACRO under their leadership with a bunch more resources on Parchment's Send platform. Um, this is a, a clickable link. It'll take you to this website. Um, I believe it's uh, parchment, um, it's info.parchment.com forward slash acro transcripts. So all of that should be embedded in this document as we, uh, we share this out with folks after the um, presentation. So I will take a pause there, Mel. I will see if any other questions have come in through the chat and I'm happy to stay on as long as we need to answer questions or if there are specific things people wanted to see, would also be happy to pivot back to the demo and show folks. Great, thank you so much. There are a couple more questions. Uh, the first is, refers back a little bit to the demo. And the question is, does every student have an option of typing in a destination for an e-transcripts. Uh, some students have reported that the email address uh, to be delivered is pre-populated and they can't enter a different address. Got it. So I, 
in, in the workflow, and maybe Justin, if you, it's not too much to go back to that student ordering site to help illustrate the point. Yeah, Just, absolutely. absolutely. Um, okay. Let me get that back in the process of where a student selects that. Sure thing. And we'll switch over. And I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know, Justin, I would defer to you that maybe the question around pre-populated might be coming from like a, a cache in a web browser versus, uh, is that your it, kind of thought as well? Or what are you thinking? It could be a cache, uh, you know, just, it just suggesting, or if they suggested, uh, you know, I want to send to myself versus another individual where we pre-populate the account information. The other thing that can come up is sometimes um, when a student selects a destination, like I did ASU, um, in the in the demonstration, they might see a suggestion of like where to reach out, like transcripts at asu.edu if they have questions or, or something. Um, but uh, if I I'm, I'm ready to pull up that workflow, so I'm going to steal the screen share real quick. Steal away. And then um, so this is that destination search that we showed before, um, where if they input that. ASU as I did to, to find that location, they may see that. But it truly uh, is when they send to themselves or another individual, we'll just go, I'm sending to another individual here. It is a blank form where they can enter whatever email address they'd like, whatever physical address uh, they wanna send that to for Parchment to print that out. So they should be seen when going through the workflow of, I'm gonna send it directly to somebody, I'm not gonna search for anything, uh, the ability to put in that email address, no problem. Uh, it's only just sometimes there's extra information that schools provide. Uh, that show uh, a popular email address that they can also send it to or send questions to, things like that. So it's just an additional receiver option. Excellent, thank you, that's very helpful. Um, another question um, asks, is there, is there the ability to send um, an unofficial student copy digitally through this platform as opposed to just the official? Um, and this is particularly because some institutions don't charge for unofficial copies. Got it. Yes, that's a, a great question. So um, most institutions that work with us will still afford their students the ability to get a, an unofficial copy through the, the web portal, whether that's, you know, you're using Banner or Colleague or whatever system you have. Um, many institutions still continue to do that. We also have the ability to set product specific pricing based off of the, the, the type of credential that's being requested. So if you wanted as an institution to say, a, create a product in the storefront that's called individual, uh, you know, self view transcript, we do have the ability to set specific pricing for that product versus a transcript that's going externally. So we absolutely can support that kind of workflow. I, I kind of want to better understand what the, um, use cases specifically, and, and then we could definitely provide some thoughts as to pros and cons of each solution. I hope that's responsive. Great, thanks. I have a couple of more questions around security. Um, so uh, the first, I'm going to combine these a little bit. Um, one asks if you can generally speak to the security around the electronic version of the, the transcript and then um, also then talk about how institutions might secure the PDF so that they're not altered. That's a great, great question. I'll, uh, Justin, I'll let you tackle that. I see you're already pulling up um, uh, a visual to help with that. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, so what I'm showing right now is the PDF version of the transcript output, the final thing that gets sent for Indiana University, one of Parchment's members. Um, first thing you'll notice up here at the top is this blue ribbon. Uh, it's often referred to as the blue ribbon security. Parchment holds the patent with Adobe for this type of security that locks down the document from any edits uh, using, uh, once that document's been signed and officially uh, stated, uh, removes any edits. You can also add things like a watermark. So if I pull up this print, and I know it's small over here on the right, but you might be able to see copy of certified transcript. We had a watermark and you can customize that watermark to say whatever you'd like, copy of official transcript, um, unofficial if present, there's been different versions. So you control that. Uh, Indiana adds a cover page. So they don't upload this to parchment. We already have that built on the back end um, for the students. We have a same uh, 
type of page for the security to talk about the blue ribbon security and how that checks and is altered and if it's altered what you would see and uh, how it can't be altered um, and checks back with that live state from original send. And then this is the transcript that Indiana University sends us. However, it doesn't have this background. They just send the data. So you're uploading a black and white uh, kind of transparent background PDF uh, typically. And then we layer on the artwork, seal background, signatures, uh, any other elements that you want to make modular uh, that don't come with the transcript upload. That's all done by parchment before we send it out. And then oftentimes the last page is a transcript key or legend to read it. Um, so one, the PDF is locked down uh, for the security, doesn't allow any edits for that. And then um, two, we construct everything from the output on our side. So all you have to upload to us is the transcript data piece. Thank you, Justin. Fantastic. And, oh, I do have one more question that has come up. Uh, my apologies. I am um, here. I'm going to ask another one and then come back to this one. Sure. Are there any plans to create an app for students uh, to receive a copy of their transcripts um, on their smartphones? Yeah, that's a, a great question. So the every every bit of the technology that we showed you today, both the student side and the administrative side is completely web responsive which means that it's gonna reshape to the screen size of the device that it's being viewed on. So if I uh, access the parchment ordering site from an iPhone, it is gonna intelligently know that it's on an iPhone and it's gonna reshape to be more accessible for that student. Uh, ditto for the administrative side too. So if you're at home processing from a tablet, you can access it uh, via web. As Justin's showing you now what it might look like on a um, iPhone 10. Um, or an iPad or an iPhone 6 here as that content kind of reshapes so that fields aren't living in other parts of the screen that you can't see. There are no plans to build out a full application right now, like a mobile app. It just, we haven't seen it. We, we've put a lot of thought and research into it. We haven't seen it be the, the primary uh, driver of the, or the primary behavior of the activity. So it's more of a thing you know, that, that comes in and students access it through their institutional portal. They'll come over to Parchment. Gating them to a, a web app at that point may actually be a barrier. It's certainly something we've considered as we think about uh, the, uh, the student account and the ability to access these things. But to, I think to put the point home, all of these things, whether it's a digital diploma or a, a transcript issued here, is entirely accessible and pretty quickly so from a, a web app or a web site used on a student's phone. Anything you'd add to that, Justin? I would say just right along the lines of what you were saying, what we've heard most feedback from our members is they start on our website, right? They're searching for the institution, they find the transcript page. So they're already utilizing a browser and then to take them out of that to download an app. Um, while it's nice to have a mobile accessibility from a, from a students workflow perspective how they engage with an ordering process uh, sometimes you know puts more barriers in the way so that's another thing that we've considered when we we look at that workflow from a student's point of view yeah great thank you um another logistical another couple of actually logistical questions um one has to do with the fact that some institutions right now only have the ability to render data electronically um, at, that is a certain age old, for example. And they have older transcripts that they have to send in a different way. Yeah. And so how do you deal with institutions in terms of the process if a student goes online and requests a record that actually can't be rendered digitally? Do you have a way or a process to support the uh, electronic delivery of those transcripts? Yeah, yeah, that's a, also a really, a really common thing that we see almost always. There's a subset of the records that live in the current SIS, and we know with 100% uh, assurance these records are, are legit and the data is strong. And then there's a, another subset where the data maybe lives in that SIS and we're not as sure on the integrity of it. Maybe there was a migration or even older records live in microfilm or in a legacy SIS or a mainframe. 
And so we do have workflows to support the order and the delivery of each of those. So in, in the example, let's say uh, records existed in a, a non-digital format pre-1985. We can still take that order. Uh, the student processes it. Um, on your side, you're going to then see that order come through. And if you know, um, based off the data we've collected, this, this student attended from 1982 to 1984, you'll know not to check into uh, Genzibar. You'll know to go look at your, uh, your mainframe or your um, non-digital storage format. And as long as you can get a PDF or a TIFF file out of that, so even a scanned image will work, you can upload it via that web interface that Justin showed to allow it to be sent digitally. The one thing I would call out in, in the process, given the current climate, is if you don't have remote access to that portal, whether it's uh, you know it's microfilm that lives in the basement, or it's a old system that you can only access if you're on campus, that might be a limitation where we might want to still gate those students from ordering, ordering it electronically. But so long as if you could access those records, um, we can support the exchange of it digitally. Fantastic. Um, so I have two last questions and then I think we are nearing, nearing time. Uh, the first is, um, do you have a process if they wanted to print the transcript in office that might, that is ordered through the portal? How, how, yes. how might they do that? Yep. So we, we support both. Um, I would, I will say the majority of our, our institutions at least have the option for parchment to print. It's not something that takes away your capability of doing it. If a student were to come in and ask for a walk-up order, you can, you can still do that. Um, but the majority of our, our partners have moved to uh, parchment, uh, supplementing that with our print facilities, mostly because it's same day and there's tracking on those documents to mirror the tracking that they're getting on electronic. And actually in the last month and a half, we've seen institutions that previously were still printing all of their transcripts in-house and only using parchment for digital really uh, with great uh, magnitude switch over to allowing us to print them so they don't have to bring their staff into the office. But yes, we do offer that flexibility. It's not a hard requirement. It is something that we can offer as an option. All right, fantastic. And then the last question has to do with record um, recall. Um, once a student has a copy of their transcript or diploma, can it be voided? Uh, yes and, um, and no. So there's, um, there's some nuance to this. And so the, the technology around this is something called uh, document rights management. And so for documents that are sent over our secure network, if it's going to a, a secure receiver, um, that, that technology is turned off because what we found is if you, you do have it on and a document expires after you know, 15 days or 30 days, your admissions office opens it up and on their, on their imaging system and they get a black X and they can't see it any longer. And so what part of the benefit of the, the parchment network is that feedback loop that informed how we iterate from a product perspective. And we've now turned that off for those types of documents. But if a document is going to a, an email address securely, you can certainly still have um, the ability to, uh, to revoke it, to expire it, all those things that you'd want to do. Um, with a digital document and, and ditto for our digital diplomas and certificates as well. You can expire those documents if you've realized that you've made a, a data issue or if a, uh, a particular program has a cap on the, the length of that certification is valid for. So um, I think, you know, as, as we conclude here today, uh, Hopefully this was really helpful information for you. If nothing else, a slight reprieve from the day to day of what you all are, are, um, are working on. I think one of the questions that we get quite a bit is, um, you know, what, what's the, what's, wh why parchment, right? Like, why would I go with parchment? Um, there are other providers in, the, in this space that do th similar things. Um, I think we all, you know, uh, the National Student Clearinghouse is, is a really great company that does a lot of work in this space. And so when I'm asked, you know, why, why, why you over anyone else? It's a tough thing to really answer, just generally speaking, and it's not a, a, a cop out. Of, uh, but I, it's truly, uh, it, it's really institutional specific, right? And so I think there's a number of things that other folks in this market do really, really well. I happen to think, um, as I mentioned earlier, when I'm evaluating any software provider for parchment, I want to make sure that the ceiling of that partnership is really high, and then I'm evaluating it based off of the, uh, the, the additional features and functionality that I, uh, that I might get 
as that company innovates over time with me. And I think that's where, um, that's why I work at Parchment is, is the excitement for me is what we're, what we're doing with our partners to help not only make a transcript digital, but help make that credential more meaningful and impactful for the student and for the institution. And so you can't do any of those things if you don't have a digital partner in place. But once you do have a digital partner in place, then it starts to get really exciting. And when we talked about the, the sharing of the digital diplomas on LinkedIn, that's not only fantastic for a student, it's also fantastic for the branding of the institution and the marketing of that institution. We also have a number of institutions that work with us to embed clickable links within their transcripts that point back to course syllabus descriptions, grade distributions, little bits and pieces that give the recipient a greater sense of what that student's actually learned. And, that, and that's what's really exciting for us here at Parchment. Um, so, so hopefully that's um, you know, helpful in kind of closing remarks. And I'm certainly happy to, um, to, to speak more directly with folks um, via that, uh, the webpage. If you, if you have questions, check it out, put in a, a form fill. And also my, my uh, personal contact information will be on the website as well. Thanks again. I really appreciate our colleagues from Parchment for uh, providing this webinar. That was an incredibly information, uh, in informative session um, and excellent engagement with the q and I appreciate all of your time. Um, this concludes the webinar. I want to be respectful of folks' time. Um, I, for those of you who need much more specific and tailored guidance, uh, if we didn't get uh, questions answered, Acro Consulting has marshaled expertise to offer heavily discounted consulting sessions that can be customized to exactly what your needs are, um, priced at $995 to support your unique challenges with seasoned expertise and actionable recommendations. For more information, check the website or contact consulting.org for more information. Next slide. And lastly, this, this webinar is the first in a three-part series dealing with transcript and document delivery uh, during this time of crisis. And so stay tuned on Wednesday, April 29th to hear from our other colleague in the space, the National Student Clearinghouse on solving your transcript and other documentation needs during COVID-19 and beyond. And then on Wednesday, May 6th, you'll hear about DIY transcript and document solutions sustaining business continuity during challenging times with our very own colleagues from the Acro Speedy Committee. We have a couple of other additional topics on the schedule. Um, Friday, May 1st, we'll talk about enrollment planning for COVID-19 and beyond. And on Tuesday, May 5th, if you're interested in hearing about the search for the Acro Executive Director, um, we will have a conversation with the Board of Directors on Tuesday, May 5th. More information and registration is available online at acro.org slash COVID guidance. I look forward to seeing you at one of our upcoming topics and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody.